No more let sins nor sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow far as the curse is found. So Merry Christmas, everybody. I'm going to turn the camera around and uh, before we get into looking at Ruby 3 and Nerd Christmas, I'd like to wish you a happy real Christmas. So um, Jesus Christ came into the world to seek and save the lost, a, the righteous dying for the unrighteous. I make a lot of uh, light about being um, an ar anarchist and uh, being anti-government, but in the case of Jesus Christ, I am very firmly pro-government of his rule and the increase of his government shall know no end. But his government is completely different than the governments of men. Jesus Christ's kingdom grows by turning enemies into friends, sinners into saints. It grows by loving your enemies and praying for those who persecute you. And it grows by care and generosity by people being the hands and feet of Jesus. And, um, and the, these weapons are not, are not carnal. Um, the, the kingdom of Jesus is not of this world. It doesn't grow by seizing the uh, rule and authority of man. It grows by loving your neighbor as yourself, and loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. So I just wanted to wish you all a Merry Christmas, turn the camera around, um, and thank you for watching. We will uh, now get on to the nerd Christmas portion of this video where we look at Ruby 3. And now we move on to the nerd Christmas portion of this video. This is a, a big day in Ruby history, the drop of Ruby 3.0.0, Christmas Day 2020. So we'll take a look at this. Um, the, um, this is using the, the opt caret uh, emulator metric for speed, and in this case, Ruby uh, 3.0 is three times faster than 2.0. Uh, it's not going to be that way in every um, instance that you're using Ruby. There's an um, article somebody wrote about how you can really lie with benchmarks and choose your lies well, but uh, in this case, it, it does uh, move a lot faster, and we're going to show some other examples of how this moves faster, uh, particularly pasting stuff into IRB. So uh, the, the Ruby's never been the best at semantic versioning. So there's a big jump between 1.8.6 and 1.8.7, which you would think is a patch level change, but um, all of your your changes to the, the hash syntax and all that stuff show up in 1.8.7, which is kind of almost the, the real 2.0 of Ruby. So Ruby's never been big on um, adhering to s semantic versioning in a um, in a really strict way. So um, we're gonna take this and take a look at our uh, nerd dice gem that we've been working on, see how it works in uh, Ruby three, and um, and then I'm also gonna run a test suite on a Rails project, and I'm doing this all live. Uh, I don't even have 3.0 installed in my system yet, so we're going to kind of look at this together and see how it turns out. So there's a lot of stuff coming in. Most of it's experimental, so you've got um, some enhancements with these uh, Ractors for uh, kind of thread-safe um, parallel execution got the fiber scheduler uh, and the ability to do like an async block. Uh, you've got RBS, which performs some static analysis on your code. Um, you're still uh, dynamically, good old dynamically typed Ruby code duct typing. 
will still work. Um, but in the event that you do want to increase your performance, you can use this new RBS gem. And there's a type prof that mostly does this for you. So we've got the gem type type prof. Let's see if I can say that here. Um, it allows you to take a class like this and provide output in the RBS format. And there's also an online version of it that you can try out. And there's also some, some more documentation on it, some demos of it. And uh, they do note that it's experimental and um, only a subset of the Ruby language is supported. So take that caveat as you incorporate it into your projects. So we've got some other features. So um, one line pattern matching uh, uses the hash rocket syntax and uh, the in uh, um, matching method here now returns true or false instead of raising a no matching pattern error. There's a find pattern here so you can do case in instead of case when. You can define an endless method. So instead of, if, if you've got a one-liner uh, def square equals x times x, usually you'd um, def square new line x times x and then end. Um, hash dot accept. And there's a memory view CAPI. So the pasting long code into IRB, we're going to actually demo that on 2.7.2 2 and on 3.0. There's a measure command, some changes as it relates to um, keyword arguments separated from other arg arguments. They extracted some things out into, into gems, updated some standard libraries, moved a couple of things to be no longer bundled or standard. Uh, so you'd have to, if you're going to deal with web, web brick, you would now need to install that gem. And then a lot of these files are now default gems, but they're published on rubygems.org. Um, notable here is ERB, NetFTP, NetHTTP, Secure Random, Time. Um, and then we can download it. So that's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna go to my command prompt here, rvm get head. vm list known rep three. And here we see Ruby 3.0.0. So we'll execute this command. You ch Ruby or um, some of the other 
Ruby managers, you can look into the documentation and do what you would here. So we'll, we'll pause while this configures. So we're done here. The process took about three minutes on my machine. So we're going to now, let's see, Ruby 3.0.0. For a minute, I'm going to demonstrate the the speed up in pasting stuff into IRB. So switch back into 2.7.2. Open up an IRB session, and I'm going to I've got this script in. Sublime, it's a 59 line script that does some benchmarking on some random pseudo random number generation. And I'm going to paste this into IRB in 2.7. So we'll keep this real time so that you can see the speed of 2.7. So you can see now it's taking over a second per line as you get to line 38 or line 39. Even the comments are slow. All right. Still going here. seems to be almost like an n plus one issue in 2.7 so the more lines you paste in the slower each subsequent line gets here we're getting close line 54 out of 59 See, this is pasting in, I mean, somebody who types quickly can almost paste that in at the same rate. So I'm not going to actually, well, I guess I will run it. I'll just pause it while I run it. So we'll so we've got our benchmarks here. And We'll exit out. We'll go to 3.0, paste the same item into IRB. Yes, that did just happen. So that took something that took over a minute in 2.7 to paste in. We're talking a second to to do that. The um, and then we've got our our benchmark running here. It takes about 10 seconds for the, the longest one there, and then we're done. So copying and pasting into IRB way faster as advertised. I think the specs themselves are a little bit slower on this random number generation. Um, you're talking a tenth of a second for five million round trips. So got that. Let's see how it works. So we're going to go and take a look at the nerd dice gem that we've been working on. See if we can run that here. So bundle install seemed to work. Our spec is all passing. 
Let's see what happens though when we go with a little bit more complicated of a situation here. So we're going to clone this. So this is a, a Rails app. We'll see if this will bundle install work on this. There may be some gems, so before I hit enter here, that um, use the pessimistic operator when they um, when they define their Ruby. So even though it might not technically break if you have that um, pessimistic operator where you're requiring a Ruby 2.x version, it might fail. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to pause while, while we run this. Things like Nokogiri are going to take a while. Ah, so it, it defaulted to 2.7, so maybe we're a bit premature here. Let me... Pull this up in VS Code. Go to the gem file. using RVM 3.0.0. still seem to be successful so we're going to try a rail server command and see what's going wrong here go to local host thousand to run the migrations. local host All right so we're what I'm doing wrong here. It's my first time doing it on this user, so. Let me pause and read some docs. So I think my problem is I need to run yarn install.
let this run. So yarn install succeeded. Let's try running the server again. Looks like it's working. Now we'll try running the test suite again. Pause while we run this. So that failed right away. Let's see what happens if I just run tests by themselves. No, nope, that failed right away too. So we're getting an, a load error regarding REXML. So the problem seems to be with the REXML slash document dependency. I'm going to try to solve this initially with a bundle update. Try running the tests again. Still running into trouble with boot snap. So we'll take a look at Bootsnap on RubyGems. See if REXML was one of those ones that was moved out into a gem. And now bundled gems. So let's So that's the effect of having something that was part of the, the core libraries now be part of a bundled gem is that you need to, if you have um, items that were depending on that, then you have to, to watch out for, for that. So we'll try now the full suite. We'll pause while we do this. So we are running still into some errors on our integration tests. 
click number of arguments is different. So I'm not exactly sure why this is failing on me. Still erroring out. So I think I found the issue. I'm going to downgrade and show you. Set the head. Passing tests here, you will see deprecation warnings related to the Selenium web driver. So, this is standard Ruby version upgrade stuff, nothing specific to 3.0 compared to 2.7 or 2.6 or the, the other previous versions. So, um, it looks like there's some some work to do on the Selenium web driver side to fix some of the compatibility warnings from um, from the deprecations and we'll see how these tests go I see at least one issue So that was just one failure, but otherwise you can see this um, using the last argument as a keyword parameter is deprecated. Maybe the double asterisk should be added to the call. So that's um, whenever you see a deprecation warning in one version of Ruby, it will stop working in the next version of Ruby. And you can see in the um, the release notes usually you can see in the release notes that'll make a mention of deprecated stuff no longer working but so if you've got something simple like our nerd dice gem that doesn't have a lot of dependencies go ahead and upgrade to um, to Ruby 3 today if you've got something like a rails app that you have extensive application systems test case stuff going on uh, you might want to submit a pull request to selenium web driver or um, wait a little while for those things to get resolved but overall really impressed with Ruby 3 so far and uh, I think it'll be a great addition to the Ruby community. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.